Agus Tamich and Shaw and Oct, the Hriu score Hincher Kundi Ardwaha, a Gil Plefe, a Gundi Ardwaha, Agus Lum and Oct, Ta Padrick Omehi, Farate, Kajimur Tatu, a Fadrick. Come on, come on, Ta, I'll see you on the Eastern Top of the Head, hugging Tadella, the Shop and Nana, the Noah Party. Agus Fadrick, could you tell Gesh the score? The pitch and come in the class game. Well, Bunny and score in Niger Shaskin, Niger Gadlerk score shot to air. Of this feature, Bunny had that Condini, a Rihan Gera, a Hop the Kane, on his domain, promoted to Yaka, a Rinka, Rinka, a Rania, a Vashora, a Vashin, a Darane, being a being promoted to Yaka. Into my fad. And the five million dollar question, Paddy, how do you think uh, the standard in score compares today with the earlier years? Well, way back when I started in 1970 71, uh, people who would have won county finals then wouldn't count today. The fitness and the athleticism of the younger people is great. And the Irish music, as in all sections throughout the country, cold to the with uh, flag hole, and has really come on leaps and bounds. And what about the Novelty Act, for example? The novelty Acts can go up and down, you never know. Uh, they would have been consistently good and still are. Very so, so it has no made that for Clark Bay, Aaron Levine, a crown of doing an up egg, onion and comic, as for Club Ostock.
that's calling you back again. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? As you roam through a lonely London town, when the evening's full. songs and stories the whole night long tears little than that you thought of leaving it seems so strange now that you were gone oh can you Fish are dancing on Clenway River. The teams are sporting in Old Glenvale. My heart no longer can lead the cheering when you're not It's a different game Oh, can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? As you roam through a London town When the evening's full
I've longed to kiss them, but I'd not the nerve to tell. You are my Belfast love, and there's no one above you. You're my Belfast belly, you see. There's no one but you for me.
tell you what they did for 45 years. They conveyed one another to First Mass in Mullabon every Sunday morning. Walked and talked the whole way there, walked and talked the whole way back, and talked the whole way through Mass. But not to God. Lizzie and Bridget's were their names. And one Sunday morning they went over to the chapel and it was full up with young people. You see, our ma were ready to be at some place to see him Sunday. The very minute Mass was over, there was a stampede for the door, and Bridget and Lizzie were waylaid in the crowd, rent asunder. And by the time Bridget got up to the chapel gates, what the blazes do you think Lizzie was doing? She was standing there talking to two returned yanks. Two queer swells they were. A great big Yankee man about six foot four wearing a white hat, smoking a cigar the length of a poker, and a nice neat little bit of a Yankee woman with short sleeves on her and a big glossy handbag that you could fit two bales of straw in if you were badly stuck. God bless her. Two elbows like two corkscrews. Now, by the time Lizzie got up to the chapel gates, Bridget didn't want to be standing there staring at her with her mouth open like the front door, so she walked on. And in no time at all, Lizzie overtook her on the road. And when Lizzie overtook her on the road, Bridget turned around and says to her, Well, who was the queer smell? She was talking to the chapel gates this morning. Oh, you'll not believe it when I tell you. Home from America, and they know our Michael's pack that went to New York, and they're coming up to see me, she says, on Tuesday evening. Oh, that could put you in a deal of bother. Oh, she was as jealous as the devil. Bother? What bother will it put me to? Oh, you'll have to wheel out the bicycle in the morning and take it into town and buy a bottle of whiskey for them, and buy meat for them, and buy cakes for them, for the devil in hell wouldn't stuff them out yanks whenever they come home. Lord have mercy on me mother and father had them home in 1933 and we never got the better of them yet. Uh, they'll put me to no bother whatsoever in this world, says Lizzie, for I'll tell you what I have yonder at the house. I have a gander that was left on me hands at Christmas, she says, and I'll go home now, she says, and I'll catch him, she says, and I'll neck him and I'll pluck him and I'll roast him and I'll have him for the yanks whenever they come. And home she went, and she caught him, and she necked him, and she plucked him, and she got him, and she stuffed him, and she roasted him, and she had him. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven o'clock on Tuesday evening. No yikes appeared. So the following Sunday morning, she went over the road, and she met Bridget, and the first thing Bridget says to her was, Well, how did you get on with the yikes? Ah, says Lizzie, should they never darken the door? Ah! That's Bridget. And isn't that an awful shame and the gander going bad in your hands like that? <laughs> ah, no, says Lizzie. The gander didn't go bad in my hands. Oh, you had to give him away then? <laughs> eh, no, no, I didn't give him away, no. Well, what in the name of God did you do with him? I had him, she says. <laughs> Myself. The whole gander? Yourself? I did, yes, and not a bit of bother on me. Oh, Lord, save us, my heart will stop for the woman to do the likes of that. And what harm is it for me to eat what I've reared up from a goose egg? Harm? Ah, but you're an ignorant woman. Pride, covetousness, lust, gluttony, anger, envy and sloth. Gluttony, she says, one of the seven deadly sins. Stop right there in the middle of them. Oh, get away from about me, for if you drop down the road, you'll be in the lowest harm in hell before I can even get the priest for you. Poor Lizzie. If you'd have stabbed her with a knife on the road, she wouldn't have lost one drop of blood. She was that taken in. She went to the chapel and she didn't hear one word the priest said. She went home, didn't sleep Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night or Wednesday night. But Thursday night, be good luck, was confessions for the first Fridays. She went over and the chapel was full up. No good at all for an old woman who's after committing a deadly sin. Now there was rumours that there was cards in the hall the same night and the priest was mad of fire to get up to it. But after a lot of jostling and pushing she got in. And when she got in he says, How long is it since your last confession? Eh, well my father, just this day month, I've been doing the nine Fridays now for 45 years. Ah, oh, yes, I have. Very good deed. Four to five years. And what do you remember from when you were last here? <laughs> well, my father, I've committed one of those deadly sins. And you know, with the crowd and everything, it's a way out of my head. You'll have to give me a minute now. It's one that's stuck in the middle. Pride, envy, and he was fidgeting for he was mad to get up to the cards. Aha! I have it. 
I committed adultery. <laughs> I'm indeed aggrieved to hear this confession this evening, especially from a woman in the autumn of her life who's been doing the nine Fridays for 45 years. Okay, a great man in the box. What in the name of all that's merciful came over for you to do such a thing? Well, there he was, Father, lying above on the table with his two legs up and him nice and brown. And I put my hand over, she says, and when I got a taste of it, shut the devil took me. Where am I? A crowd of lads were muffled up in the Sunday Rosalie and they played to an old piano. It was badly irritated. The night was July the 11th and they made the rafters roar with the most harmonious rendering of the sash before the war. Outside the blazing bonfires made night as bright as day and all the crowd was watching in a wobbly sort of way. They were singing and shouting and such it in the mid. They nearly drowned the clanging as the battle fast fire began. Me and Joe were best friends, you know. Every evening would find them together. They would travel the land on the heels of the band, never caring a fig for the weather. To dance through the night was their greatest delight. They were well known in each country hall. Twas Johnny who danced like a man in a trance, while Joe, sure he stood with his back to the wall. In a little pub in London, Moriarty drank his beer and recited wondrous stories of his exploits far and near. Now an Irish song, says Kelly, best of all the one and all. And Moriarty sang for them, the hills of Donegal. There was cheering at the finish and they called encore, encore. But Moriarty told them, lads, I can't sing anymore. And he stood there, sad and silent, gazing down into his beer. And in his eyes there glistened the starting of a tear.
A novel! Good man, tell me more! Well, you know, it's a wee bit raunchy, yeah. It's all about the bones on behind the hair shades, if you get the drift. Sounds interesting, but you need to have a good title. Something original and catchy. Oh, I have an original title, all right. I'm calling it Fifty Shades of Hair. <laughs> Right, right, certainly, man. You should wait and see Mr. Brown, the literary agent. He'll be here in about an hour. An hour? Yes. Well, I'll have to call him the same again, hey, for a funeral to go to. Oh, dear, is it someone close to this stage? Ah, it's just an old vegetable farmer from down the road. I need to get a move on. They're expecting a big turn up. <laughs> and he's. <laughs> I come to speak the translations of my client, Gregor Palance, who seeks the advice of the benefit. Yes, well, we'd need to take some details from your client to try and get him some gainful employment. This woman seeks some information for to gain you some work. Work? Work? I do not come to Ireland to work. I work hard all my life in Poland. I come to Ireland to live like Irishman, to drink cheap vodka from Lidl. <laughs> And leave on benefits. Uh, my friend, he don't decide what job he like yet. <laughs> okay, but we would still need some details. Past employment, history, family, etc. Are you married? <laughs> Do you have wife ski? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have children ski? <laughs> ask this see what he shall. Tell him I am Polish, not Austrian. My wife does not ski. I do not ski. My children do not ski. I am Gregor Polans. I have nagging wife and two small brats. My client understands a little of your question. He is having one woman, two children. And where do you live, Mr. Plans? Where do you live, you? I live in <laughs> big style. Not fit for human habitation. Being extortion money to mafia landlords in room not big enough to swing a cat. He lived in not very big house. <laughs> have you any medical problems? <laughs> Do you have problems with medical? I have busted the eardrum from this woman. Sore <laughs> head from nagging wife. And a sore back from all the hard work in Poland. No problems making out. <laughs> and what type of work have you done in the past? What type of work were you doing before? Unlike this fool here, I do real work. I work in the ship building and in the coal mining, but for very little money. He is very animated, almost dance-like in his movement. Yes, that is what my client is telling you. He's telling you he wants to work as a dancer. How do you say the, the jiggle? Well, that's all the details we need for now. Please tell your client to take a seat. Gregor, yes. take a seat. Okay. I take seat for two house. <laughs> the south to see if any work going. Things are shut in there down below. And uh, are you out of work at the moment? Well, no, not exactly. I've been doing a bit of sports journalism and a bit of TV work, but I think I may have tried in a few tours, especially up here. Bloody pure football. Well, it happened more than in your line of, in, of work at the minute. Is, is there anything specific you have in mind? Well, actually, yes. I hear that the Vatican are looking for a new pope. I'm a guy eight on island medals. I'm the next best thing to God, anyway. <laughs> Up you come with me. I have a great job for you. Come on. For you. Good afternoon, young man. How can I help you? Whoa. <laughs> Would you like to speak in an audible tone so I can understand what you're trying to say? Good job. Who sent you here today? What's the reason for you being here? I sent me to brew. Do you have any interests or hobbies? Uh, I like smoking <laughs> and drinking and a piece of protest. <laughs> ah, Mr. O'Toole, I was just about to tell this young man the merits of being in a club. Where's your job matching process from? Excellent, Mr. Green. We have a very much my afternoon indeed. Gregor on the police staff was his first bringing as a theatre extra. <laughs> Not the journalist was found his dream job of being more popular. He's joining the PSLA shopping house. <laughs> Great profound work for Mr. Christoph the interpreter. He's joining the merchant TV. <laughs> yes, just this young man as I had said. <coughs> I'm trying to find out what interests or hobbies he has. <laughs> 
Indeed, Mr. Green. What is to broaden one's horizons? Young man, have you ever thought of joining your local sporting or drama club? Young man, are you listening to me? I said, young man, what do you want to be? I said, young man, you must make real your dreams. But I have got to know this one thing. Young man, can you dance? Can you sing? I said, young man, maybe acting is your thing. If so, there's a place you can go. Have your club, do well, all that is good. It's going to be an F-S-C-O-R. It's going to be an F-S-C-O-R.
question, GA. Which county defeated Antrim in the 2012 Leinster Senior Hurling Championship? The first round match, Antrim were beaten, which Leinster team beat them? Oxalation, Darren Cash, second question. Which was the last Ulster County to capture the All-Ireland Under-21 football title? <coughs> Question three, history. Which Irish patriot, leader, statesman died in Genoa in 1847 on his way to Rome? General knowledge. The Great Irish River, the Shannon, from its source to its end, it passes through three great lakes. Of those three great lakes on the River Shannon, which is the largest in area? Which county defeated Antrim in the 2012 Leinster Senior Hurling Championship? Something on the score of 16 points to 14, something like that. It was West Meath. Which was the last Ulster County to capture the All Ireland Under 21 football title? That happened way back in 2004. It was Armagh. Irish leader, Irish patriot, who died in the Italian city of Genoa, 1847, making his way to Rome. That was Daniel O'Connell. Of the three great lakes, the River Shannon, which is the largest in the area, is the one near Portona there, Loch Derg. I want to uh, congratulate and thank everyone who took part tonight in our score final. I want to thank all those who adjudicated, all those who did steward outside, all those who provided lighting. I want to thank the host club to Sean and uh, Kalibi for the use of their facilities. When I was down at the back there listening to the Mahari group singing The West Awake, I kept saying to myself, well, all those who took part tonight have certainly shown that Armagh, Armagh's awake. You know, our, our language, our culture, our games, they are part of ourselves, they're part of our sinews. They are what make us Irish. They are, they are what make us ourselves. They are what sets us apart. And I thank you for keeping that alive. I thank all our club people for keeping that alive and I know there has been an increase in clubs that took part this year and I welcome that and hopefully it will go on. So I will be very brief. Thanks. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thanks for the invite to come along. It is a pleasure to be here. Thanks to everyone who made tonight possible. But more importantly, thanks to everyone who took part tonight. It was an absolute pleasure and a privilege. Mark Healy, Chris, the Kondes, more privilege to have a world out here in Nukt. Thank you, Augusty Hawaii, and I wish you all the very best. And we all wish Cross the very best tomorrow, and we hope the West is asleep tomorrow. Be Hawaii.